Hello guys, how are you guys doing? I am fabulous. If you're not fabulous, drop a comment below and we'll talk about this. Anyway, so today I will be making a peppermint tart. Some call it a peppermint pudding, but each to their own. One in the same thing, I think. Lockdown has taught me a lot of things. Anyway, let's get into it. Alrighty, so first things first, we're going to add some cream into the bowl and then we're going to whisk it. And if you have one of those whisking machines, even better because this is one arm workout that you probably might need if you have been skipping out on some arm exercises. Anyway, make sure that your cream is a little fluffy and not too soggy. Then we're going to add some cream cheese because cream cheese makes everything that much better. Then we're going to add some caramel because, hey, a peppermint tart isn't peppermint tart without caramel. Then we're going to add another good ingredient, custard sugar. But if you don't have custard sugar, worry not. You don't need to add it into the mix because it's already sweet as it is. Then we're going to add our little whipped and whisked cream into this mix. And then we're going to mix everything all together up until it looks like this. And listen, if your mixture looks way better than mine, like a lot smoother than mine, great, even better. Anywho, this part over here is solely optional, but I like everything sweet. So I took some milk and a little bit of hot chocolate, whatever brand you prefer, solely up to you. I did not add any sugar because, wow, this tart is already sweet as it is. Now I'm going to chop, chop, chop and cut through all this crisp mint chocolate. Now, I don't know if you guys know the brand Crisp, but if you don't know, don't worry. I'll write the proper full name in the description box below. Once you're done chopping, it should look like this. Now, make sure you don't chop it too, too finely. Otherwise, you're going to end up losing the taste of the chocolate within this tart. You still want to be able to taste it. So make sure when you chop it, you chop it enough with little bits of chunks and not like it disappears. Now I use these two biscuits as my base because the flavors are really, really close to what it is that I'm trying to achieve here. So I use the flavored ones and not just the original ones. But again, it's solely up to you. You can use whatever base of biscuit that you prefer. Now as you can see, I first dip my biscuit inside the hot chocolate and then I put it down on the base. But I don't dip it for too long, otherwise it's going to break off. I made a double base here just so that my little concussion doesn't necessarily just fall off and it has something steady to hold it then i add my caramel concussion and i make sure i cover all the corners just before i repeat what it is that i did the first time when i was busy adding my base to the ground i dip again inside my hot chocolate and then i create my base again and I repeat that and repeat that. And you're welcome to mix everything again. Mix it up. It doesn't necessarily have to be one flavor. But it can be the chocolate. It can be the caramel biscuit. So long as you have all these flavors together. Now, as you've noticed right now, I added a little bit of my chocolate crisp in between here. Because I want a little bit of that crunch. I don't want it at the bottom. And I just don't want it at the top on its own. You want it to be in the middle and just at the end so that there's still that taste when somebody bites right through your tart. Now I'm going to add my final, final layer. And I'm going to cover all that up just before I add what is left of my chopped chocolate crisp and all that peppermint in between. So I'm going to add it up, add it up, and then cover all the corners because I'm a fighter to cover all the corners and make sure everything is covered so that no corner is left untouched you don't want to miss anything here now once you're done fighting with those corners making sure that every inch of this tart has a little bit of peppermint and chocolate sprinkles on top it's going to look much like this if it looks better than mine again great and if you have glade wrap or a lid or anything make sure you seal your tart just before you put it in the fridge let it sit for about eight hours if not overnight then you're ready to serve then you can cut it up into nice little small cubes or big cubes up to you but it should ultimately look like so and if you like you can serve it with custard or ice cream it's solely up to you 
but I'm just going to enjoy it on its own because I haven't had this in a very long time. Well, from a shop at least. So I've been making my own and I figured, eh, why not share with the masses? Because, hey, this is what lockdown has done to us. We're pros now. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed.